what's up everyone so i took the weekend off from vlogging because we had a lot to do um, specifically for our own wedding so we had to just get all of our invites done and out um, i also was working on a completely custom website that i hand built myself and there was just a few last bits that i needed to do for the whole like rsvp system that i had coded up um, and also putting up the website, I put together this cool little montage, which wouldn't have been possible if I hadn't vlogged all throughout COVID. Uh, but uh, yeah, that was a pretty cool montage to put together. And I'm going to just uh, share with you what that looks like here on the vlog. Now that was pretty much on Saturday, and on Sunday we actually had uh, our first wedding of the year to go to, and that was for Jess's brother Peter. So uh, all of Sunday was pretty much spent uh, going over and attending his wedding, and we had a very good time. And yeah, it's it's great that uh, both Jess and Peter are getting married uh, in the same year. <laughs> In addition to all of that, um, as you saw in the previous vlog, you saw Jess and I walking over to our wedding venue to go do a walkthrough uh, uh, for our wedding with our vendors. And uh, during that time, we also had our photographer come with us and do some engagement photos. And he actually sent this over last weekend and they look freaking amazing. So let me share a couple of the photos from that with you. Let me also just shout out our photographer, his name is Brian Sargent. He was just great. Um, he worked very smoothly with us. I think he was very chill and we didn't really want to do too much pose stuff. Uh, and he was very good about just following us around and catching a bunch of candid shots. And he did pose us for a couple shots, but it felt like nothing. Uh, and it was great. So highly recommend Brian Sargent. He's also going to be our photographer for the wedding. And just after seeing these photos that he did for us, uh, I'm just super excited and, and I think we made the right decision uh, having him shoot for our wedding. So we're walking over to the library now so I could return the book that I just finished that I mentioned in the last vlog and 
I'm gonna just like go through the shelves and try and pick out a random book again. It's pretty fun when you go to the library and you just stumble across a book and it ends up being good. So we had just gotten back from the library and we took out quite a few books. So we've got three of them here. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about my strategy when it comes to picking out books in the library. Uh, today, didn't really have a plan and uh, we went over there to just basically look and see what catches our eye. Uh, but there is a little bit of a method to the madness. Uh, we first start off at the library taking a look at the new arrival section, which is right there at the front of the library. Uh, and it's basically just one bookcase and basically look through there, see if anything catches my eye. And if there's nothing there, I'll end up going up to the second floor in our library where the fiction section is. And I'll basically just start off by going up and down the aisles. And uh, the library normally has a bunch of books, like they'll be vertically in the shelves, but there'll be some of them where the cover uh, is facing outwards. and. I kind of take that as like the recommendations and I'll first start by going up and down the aisles and looking at that and as much as I hate to say this I do judge books by their covers so if there is a cover that you know catches my eye that's where I'll kind of pause and then read the title of it um, and when I do either see a cover or a title of a book that seems interesting I'll pick it up off the shelf and read the inside sleeve to get a synopsis of what the story is about and if that is enough uh, to get me interested then i'll then actually flip to a random page in the book and this is a tip that jess gave me to read a couple pages just to see if the style of writing of the author is something that i could easily read and i didn't used to do this but jess told me that i should do this because there was a book that i rented from the library about a few months ago where uh, when I started reading it, I just realized that the style of writing of the author was not something that I naturally uh, was uh, really good at comprehending when it comes to uh, visualizing and, and reading uh, books. So I would have caught that if I, you know, while picking out the book, opened up to a page and read a few pages of it. Um, but after I realized that, you know, the book the general premise of the book is interesting to me and I could understand uh, the author's style of writing pretty well, uh, then I'll basically give it a shot. Uh, another tip that Jess told me specifically that I pay attention to now is taking a look at author's debut books, which is the first book that an author came out with. So if it is a book that is a debut from an author and it was pretty critically acclaimed, then I think more likely than not it will be a pretty good read because uh, for authors writing their first book they really are going to uh, put their all in, into that writing so you, it really comes out when you read that so I also take a look to see if a book is a debut, debut from an author and that factors into whether or not I'll read it. But as far as these books, um, Jess pointed this out, which I didn't realize until later, but these were the two books that I took out. Um, one of them is called Activities of Daily Living, and then the other one is called Love in the New Millennium. Um, and then there's a third book that I, I was the one who caught my eye, and I ended up recommending it to Jess, and she ended up taking it out, and it's called Little Gods. And I think the funny thing about all three of these books is that they're all red. Um, so, I don't know, maybe I do have... Uh, uh, an affinity for picking out red books because all three books we got today have red covers. Mm -hmm. 